No, I'm kidding. It's just me. Get out of my chair. We're sorry. The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to Third Eye Champagne and the final installment of Auntie's Paranormal Stories, True Paranormal Stories. We're back at the cabin. We're back at the evil cabin. So, if you haven't watched the first part, go and watch it. Go and watch it before you come back and watch this because you're missing a lot. So I'm still in the cabin. We've been there probably nine months at this point, and uh, all the stuff is still going on. All the stuff is still happening, except this time we had a roommate move into the West Wing. And at that point, her life just went downhill, way downhill, like, like that. She never got bad vibes from it. She never had issues with it. Her kid slept. This is weird, but there was like a hallway and there were two bunk beds built into it in the West Wing. So it was like bunk bed, bunk bed. You walk like three feet and you're, you're in like a bedroom, alcovey type thing, which is where I heard all the noises. So her kid slept in the bunk bed. He hated it. He's three. He hated it. He couldn't stand it. She became obsessed with The Exorcist. It was back out in theaters at that point. She insisted we all go. So we all went. And, uh... When we got home, she was like, oh my God, do you, you have it on VHS? I'm like, yeah, I have it on VHS. I'll tell you what, I will not watch that movie now. Not after this. I won't, I haven't watched it in years. Uh, so about a week later, if that, she's going, hey, let's have an exorcist night. And we're like, we just we just watched it. Oh yeah, but you know, let's compare, you know, the, the, the new one to the old one, even though it's the same movie, more or less. But okay, sure, so we do it. Everybody watches it. Okay, we're super scared, you know, whatever. I come home a couple days later, she's alone, in the living room, in the dark, all the lights off, watching The Exorcist, which is weird, and, and, and like, I'm not even there. It's like she doesn't even barely register in here. I thought she was stoned at the time. Maybe she was. So a couple days later, I was at school, my sister comes home, and it's the same thing. Our roommate's sitting there completely glazed watching The Exorcist. So I had mentioned it to my sister. She, she, when she got, you know, when I got home, she goes, you're not going to believe what I walked in on today. You're not going to believe what I saw. And she said she had, she didn't respond to me. She was super glazed. She says, I don't think she was stoned. I don't know what's going on. It's freaking me out. So we caught her again. Like two or three days later, we, my sister and, and our boyfriends, we'd all gone out. We come home and it's like nighttime, and she's sitting there in the dark, glazed, just watching The Exorcist. I'm not making this up, I'm dead serious. So nobody really says anything. The next day, my sister and I get up, and we're like, this is, this is still when they were videotapes, okay? So it's old. We gotta get rid of it. We gotta get rid of it. So we, we took it, we broke it. We actually didn't even put it in our own garbage. We actually like drove it to the dumpster at Safeway and, and like threw it in that. And she, our roommate never mentioned it. She never said a word. But her, I, I've never seen somebody's life take such a dramatic turn. Like, everything's fine, everything's fine. And then it was like, nosedive. She eventually moved out. And um, my sister and I kept going. We kept, we kept going. We, we were there for years now. This is now years. I'm still complaining about the noises. We're still seeing shadows. We're still seeing things moving. And you know, you turn and there's nothing there. You're seeing people walk swiftly past doorways, but there's there's nobody in the house with you. We're still seeing all these things. We're still feeling like something's watching us in the woods. We're still hearing awful noises. Downstairs, upstairs. Downstairs was a basement, okay. Um, it was just a dirt room built into the side of the hill. and. It was very creepy. It was really creepy. And you would hear noises down there. You, and we always thought animals, you know, but looking back, I'm going, is, was it? Was it an animal? I got another boyfriend. And he, the minute he moved in, his, his life started to go downhill. I mean, there's no other way to put it. it. You know, he was doing great. He was doing fine. He was super functional. And then it was like, again, nosedive. 
he started spending a lot of time downstairs in that dirt room, in that basement. I mean, hours upon hours upon hours. And I wonder if it did something to him. Honestly. Honestly, it was like he would go down there. He was like obsessed with it. He would go down there and... I couldn't understand why he would want to be in a dirt room with no windows. And it, it was tiny. It was small. And, you know, it smelled. I mean, it just it didn't make any sense to me. But he would come home from work and he would just go down there. And he'd be down there until 2, 3, 4 in the morning. I finally said something to my mom, like, you don't understand these noises. Like, I can't do it. So she gets this blessed piece of chalk. I want to say the bishop blessed it. Again, Catholic. So she gets this blessed piece of chalk, and she there's a Bible verse that goes with the chalk, and it's supposed to like ward off evil or something. So I'm like, you know what? I'll I'll do it. So I went to the West Wing, and there's a doorway there, and I took the chalk and I wrote the Bible verse, and if you're supposed to say something, and I said the thing, and I will tell you this, and I'm not joking you, the noises stopped. The noises completely stopped. I never heard another sound out of that room. I never heard that scraping noise. The drawers were never opening by themselves. That room was finally clear. I'm with the new boyfriend. He's struggling, but I, I, you know, we're trying to make it work. And um, one Christmas, we had gotten, we were very poor. We were very poor when we lived there, so we didn't have a lot of money. It was Christmas. We couldn't afford a tree, but we really wanted a tree. So my boyfriend went up into the woods and behind the house and came back with this little Charlie Brown tree, this very sad, sad little tree tiny tiny tree um but he was acting kind of weird i'm not gonna lie he's acting weirder than usual when he came out back from the woods we decorate the tree and we're all sitting there trying to you know have a nice christmas and there is this very heavy buffet my mother had inherited it from her grandmother so it was like solid wood i mean like they don't make them like this anymore and um it it worked in in the winters, it ended up warping over the years, so you couldn't open the drawers. I mean, you lived, the wood was warped, so you couldn't open them anymore. So we're all sitting there, and we're trying to have our Christmas, and out of nowhere. There's about one, two, three, four drawers on it. Well, two on the other side, but I think it was just the four in the middle. All four drawers shot open all at once. It should have been impossible. And we all just stopped, and we're, all, we're I mean, nobody knew what to do. It, it's you know it's midnight it's pitch black nobody wants to go out of the house into into the woods into the darkness nobody wants to stay in the house with with obviously some kind of paranormal activity you know happening nobody knew what to do so um, we all had a beer and went to bed I mean that's kind of like <laughs> just have a beer and go to bed and we never talked about it nobody ever talked about it never again now we're going years later this is years later and everybody's lives have gone downhill it, it's like you wouldn't believe it you would not believe how bad things got for everybody associated with this house for some reason I didn't get hit that hard with it I got hit with it though but looking back now I'm going okay there's some a connection here but at the time it was just like man everybody's got it rough this is close to when we're about to move out and my sister had a cat cat was named Vega. The cat got out of the house and shot straight up into the woods. So my sister starts freaking out. We got to get the cat. We got to get the cat, you know, because last time he got out, he got his belly sliced open by a couple of raccoons. So he's a fighter. He's a scrapper. We got to get the cat. Now, just imagine this. You can see into the woods a couple of feet. And after that, you can't see anything. I don't know how many yards several yards maybe a good half mile above our house there's a fire road so um if there's a forest fire it's just a dirt road but if there's a forest fire the the, the fire trucks can come through and put it out so there's a fire road probably about half a mile up so scott okay i'm gonna go get the cat he goes up the hill and immediately disappears into the trees and we're all freaked out we're, we're all kind of halfway up the hill but he's really like he's got i've got to find the cat he, now this is Scott telling me, uh, he sees the cat. Now here's the weird thing. We were all kind of seeing the cat. Oh, there's the cat. Oh, there's the cat. Oh, there's the cat. Oh, there's the cat. But then you would kind of follow it and there would be nothing there. So he sees the cat and he's like, no, I've got the cat. So he starts going. 
he's following the cat, he's following the cat, he's following the cat. He gets up to the fire road, which is pretty far away. Can't see the house anymore, can't hear anybody anymore. He gets up to the fire road and he realizes there's no cat. He doesn't know what he's been following. Meanwhile, back at the house, the cat has reappeared. He just walked right out of the woods like, you guys are a bunch of idiots. So while Scott was chasing the cat, the real cat was already back at the house. Scotty goes past the fire road because he's like, okay, where's the cat? And where's the cat? He's looking around. He gets lost. He's lived there his whole life. He doesn't know what's going on. He's disoriented, you know, he's disoriented. He's trying to find the way back to the house. And he sees this huge flash of silver light. And he said it put the fear of God into him and he just ran. He said he truly felt like he was in the presence of evil. That's real. That's real talk. I'm like, Mom, we're living in haunted woods. We're living in an evil house. We're, we're living like this place is bad. And, and bad things happen to the people that stay here. It's bad. So I get a squirt bottle of holy water. I'm not joking. I get a squirt bottle of holy water and I completely cover myself so I don't get poison oak or I don't know, get the evil on me. I don't know. I went up as far as I dared into the woods and I'm just spraying this squirt bottle of holy water everywhere. Shortly after that we moved out and things continued actually to go downhill. We still own the house. Nobody lived there anymore. Everybody still went up in the summers, but I refused to go. I wouldn't go anymore. I'm going, no. I'm never going back to that place again. I will not go back there. The interesting thing is my little brother was old enough to drive up there and be up there alone. So he would go up there with his friends a lot and party. And he said one night he was in my room, sleeping in my room. Because when I was there, it was his room, you know, when he was there, it was my room. And he hears... on the window. He said he was petrified. He said he was absolutely petrified, completely petrified. He said, I didn't raise those shades. I wouldn't raise those shades. He hears it again. It's clearly a knock. This is not a stick banging against the window. Besides that, there's no trees anywhere near that window. That, that, that area is actually very clear. Again, the window is 20 feet off the ground. So the next morning, he gets up and his friend was like, why did you do that last night? He goes, what are you talking about? He said, I woke up and you were standing over me, staring at me, smiling. And he said, what are you talking about? I, I haven't left that room. He, well, no, I woke up, I woke up, it was about 12.30, I woke up and you were standing over me, staring at me, smiling. Ian goes, so at 12.30, I was still in the bedroom playing video games. I was awake. I didn't I didn't leave the bedroom all night. Nobody really wanted to go up there. We're all kind of talking about it now. We're all going, oh my God, like this is not a good place. Like nobody wants to be here. We can't, like nobody wants to go up there. My friend needed a place to stay. And so I said, well, I don't know if you want to go up there. No, no, no. I love Gorenville. It's beautiful. I've been to your cabin. Like it doesn't scare me. I'll go up there. I'll go up there. She was there for one day. One day. One day. And she started to feel really weird, really weird. And then she started to feel suicidal. This girl's not suicidal, okay? She's just not, she's just not that, you know, she was surprised by it. She, okay, where is this coming from? Like, I'm losing my mind, I'm going mentally ill. I've lost my mind. I'm, lo I'm losing my mind, I, I've gone mentally ill. I wanna kill myself. And she really wanted to kill herself. So she gets this idea in her head, she's just gonna go into the woods. She's just gonna go into the woods. I, I, I think she was trying to get away from the house. She said she was so dis disoriented at this point. She didn't know what to do. So she just went into the woods behind the house. So somehow, somehow my sister gets her on the phone, has enough signal to get her out of the woods, direct her out of the woods. At this point, it's night has fallen. I don't know how they got her out of the woods. I really don't. And she just ran in the house, grabbed her shit, got her car and left. She left so quickly that her shoe came off in the driveway and she just left it there. My sister and I start trying to investigate the house again. Once again, there's no evidence the house exists. There's no evidence that the other house that was on the property that burned down exists. There is no, no blueprints anywhere. We can't find anything anywhere. 
somewhere. We can't find, we can find going back to the people that sold us the house and that's it. One time we had this lady out of nowhere show up to the house and she was like, oh, I used to live here. Can I tour your house? Um, and we let her in the house and she went through the house and she was kind of going, oh, this used to be here and this used to be here and this used to be here. And um, I, I mean, there's no evidence that this woman ever owned the house is basically what I'm saying because we can only go back as far as the previous owners before us. What we did find, interestingly enough, is um, I guess the Native Americans that used to live around the river would not go into the woods. They would only stay around the river because they believed that the woods were cursed and evil and haunted. And there we were living in them. There we were living in them. In that house. I don't know what was in that house. My mom goes to sell the house. She's like, we can't have this house. We can't have it. I don't want to retire there. Forget this house. We're done with this house. She can't sell the house. The house won't sell. Now, at this point, real estate in Sonoma County was popping. It was just starting to pop. So every house is getting sold. Every house is getting sold for cash. My mom can't sell the house. So someone suggested hiring uh, an energy healer. We ended up hiring Will the Witch Doctor, which if you've seen my other videos, you know that he has done energy work on me, and he doesn't know I call him a witch doctor, but that's how we found him. So he went to clear the house. He actually had to bring somebody with him because he felt on the energy, and he was like, I can't, I can't even do this alone. We don't tell him anything about the house. We just say the house needs to be cleared. He gives my mom this full report, and you would not believe this thing. He was saying that... There was stuff he was picking up on that happened to us that he could not have known. That the only people that would have known would be me and my sister. He had information about things that happened to us in that house when we were alone. And he said that the house is cursed, the ground is cursed, it's cursed the family, I'm clearing it all, I'm taking care of it. Within two weeks that house sold. And you know what, my mom, she didn't want her furniture back. She didn't want her furniture out of it. We went up there to clear some of our stuff out and I actually went because I wanted to make sure that we got, you know, because we had a lot of stuff from my grandparents, great grandparents. And my nephew wanted to take a video because it's a house he actually grew up in there. He never saw anything. It's the weirdest thing. You, you know, you think as a baby, as a child, he, he would have been freaked out. Never, 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 never. And in fact, I think the energy got better after he was born. But I took a video. I mean, I took it with a video camera. I took a video. Never came out. It never came out. You look at it and it's like static. It's 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 fuzz. It's like you can kind of see the walls in the house. You can kind of see through this static, but it it there's no sound. It's just static, and there's no the picture was never clear. And then you get these blips where you like you'd see it really clear. And of course, I I can't find it. I don't know where it is. I bet my mom has it though. She has it. I might put it up here because it's creepy. But yeah, you get blips of something completely clear. Oh, there's the wall. Oh, there's this picture. Oh, there's this tree or whatever. But mostly it was just static. And you look through the static, you could see something behind it. We got what we wanted out of the house. She didn't want hardly any of it. Nobody wanted, nobody wanted anything in it. The house sold within two weeks. I still have nightmares about it. There are my, my auntie's true paranormal stories. Happy Halloween. Find me where you can find me. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, I'm everywhere. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. And end this.